AI is intelligence as a product and everybody having access to that. So it's an equal playing field, but the way you use it is going to be the difference. Artificial intelligence plus natural intelligence equals enhanced intelligence. Mm. This is how you start to make yourself AI proof yeah. is you replace yourself. Everybody should be using AI in their business. Yeah. That's just a simple fact. Whether you like AI or not, it doesn't matter. I'm new. I want to build the business with AI. What's the first thing you tell me? It has to work or it has to work. All right, welcome to Circle of Greatness. I'm your host, Nehemiah Davis. And today, thought leader, entrepreneur, Futures. amazing businessman, AI, been talking about AI before there was AI. My brother, my friend, 19 Keys. Man, it's a pleasure bro. to be here, Thank you for coming, bro. Yes, How you feeling? I feel magnificent. You pull man. up now, you had the rain just start coming, the storm start <laughs> we coming. We needed to bro. add elements. The ele add elements, bro. <laughs> Gotta add the elements. Yeah, bro. We've been at it now. We met over 10 years ago, I want to yes, say. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that minute. was like, I want to say, that wasn't the beginning of our journeys, but we were doing it, but that was like a close yeah. to the beginning of the yeah, journey, that bro. Was, that was deep in the grind stage of like, I would say developing the mindset yeah. to point us to the trajectory where we at today. Let me ask you a question. At that time, I knew I would be a millionaire. I knew I was going to be successful at some point, but I couldn't, I couldn't tell you how. Mm -hmm. It's really 10 years, 10, 12 years. I couldn't tell you how. I couldn't say what, I couldn't really say what was going to happen. Did you know you was going to be this global? Like, I, I always talk to you. I look at you like, far kind for you yeah, like mm. yeah you know that Malcolm X like you are like that person now so did mm. you know then or did you just grow into who you are right now well first of all those are very humble humble regards yeah. very very little things can humble me but comparisons to two of my favorite greatest tourists in the world yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and black Muslims in the world and leaders in the world um I, I don't take that lightly and I'm still working to, you know, I would say meet that criteria and those requirements because yeah. those brothers hold such a high standard, yep. um, not just where they reach, but morally and righteously. Yep. And I'm still a savage working to become, yeah. you know what I mean? Me uh, too. Yeah. In that era. But to answer your question, yes. Mm. So everything was intentional, you know, um, from the very offset of really stepping into this journey. It wasn't about money. I left so much money on the table, mm. right? It was about how do I create legacy and impact and change? So it was like when people asked me what my goals were, it was like, I want to shift the world. I want to change the world. I want to create this global impact, right? And so that was always what we were working to fulfill. And so every time I read a book, I speak to a person, every aspect of the self-development journey, right? was to ultimately get to that vision I seen in my head was like, yo, I see a global leader. Mm. And it wasn't just the f America. It had to be outside America. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm a futurist. So I'm always looking to what's to come. And I knew that the barriers of the world were closed down. I was always taught that there would be a fall of America. Well, then what we going to rebuild? What's going to be brought up in a new image? So... For me, the process has been a beautiful unfolding of the ideas, the vision, uh, putting knowledge to action, right? Execution, the plan, the goal, the networking. It's been a long journey, though. It's been a, like every single day of work type of journey. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But ultimately, I feel blessed to be in the position that I am because from day one, we set out to create a global impact. That's good. You talk about your father a lot. How... Like, I haven't had a father. My dad jailed mm. since two. He died there. Um, how big of an impact does he play in your role? Like, I know you talk about him, like, some of the things he instilled in you from a child, some of the things you saw. How big of a – do you think you would be there without that impact that he played on your life? Or tell me the impact that he played. I always hear you talk yeah. about – he's at your events. Like, he's always with yeah. you. Yeah. My father, it's an interesting dynamic relationship I have with my father. Because when people think about it, people think that I just grew up in a two-parent household, which I really didn't, right? My parents separated early when I was younger in my early teenage years. Um, and later, of course, got divorced. So, you know, there was times I stayed with my pops. But what I seen from my pops was 
And, you know, quite frank, I, I never say my pops was the greatest father in the world per se, because there was a lot of times where he was absent and I didn't know where he was. Yeah. But the, but my observation of him in the environments that I did see him in as a captain, as a leader, as a commander, as, you know, gangster, you feel me, as somebody to be feared and respected and not to be trifled with, but I also seen his shortcomings, his failures. So it was like my father was like a book I got to read. You know what I mean? Of where my life can go. If I do the right thing or the wrong thing. Right? And so for me, watching my father was, you know, watching the possibility of who I could become. What's in me? What I got to conquer? Always look at your father's like a mountain. You know what I mean? Every boy in his life gets to a point where he gets to plant that flag at the top of that mountain and say, I went further than my father. Yeah. And that means your father done his job. Right. Or you've because a father is somebody who elevates you. So whether that's direct from your father or whether you had the environment to do that, because in all honesty, I don't give my mother enough credit. I just speak on fathers because I know that the world is under father. Right. And my father in late time has um, started to show up more. Right. And he has more wisdom. He has a better temperament. You know, what I mean, than he has now. And. It was a time where me and my pops never said I love you to each other. Mm. Now we can say that, right? Yeah. I used to, and I never like really spoke about this, but I used to never, like people would tell me I love you and I could never say it back. It was just that thing. I just never you felt say it. It now? was weird. Yeah, I can say it now, right? I can hear myself saying it now and not having a problem with it. But it was just because we grew up in this like very masculine household where any level of like, if you will, softness, right? I didn't see as manhood. So what I learned from my father was really like, you know, the uh, the attributes of masculinity, you know, that were all masculine, but not the, ask, the attributes of masculinity that are feminine, that are divine, right? He taught me at an early age from a spiritual standpoint, a soldier standpoint. So... I speak on that purposely because I need to see more of that dynamic. Like I see Hit Boy with his father and we need to see more of that dynamic, like elevate the young ones, you yeah. feel me? But my mother is the unsung hero in my story that I don't elevate enough because she was always there. She always told me the right thing whether I listened or not, you know, but always tell her, I just didn't want to become you. So I didn't listen to you, mm. right? Mm. A boy wants to become his father because he wants to be a man. right? So oftentimes you rebel against your mother because you think that that's being a man. So my mother was always the one that was right, but I used to go left. Mm. That's good. So let me ask you this. So talked about the mother. Where did you develop? I, I tell you all the time, I'm like, oh, he's a deep boy. Like you, I look at your videos and. It's always deep. Like, it'd be like, <laughs> Keys, what you talking about, bro? Like, you just on a whole different level with your thinking and what y'all be talking about. But I'm like, I look at all the videos, million views, two million views, three mm. million views, four million views, one million views. What? People are, people are in tune. Like, I, yes, I haven't tuned in enough where I'm like, I don't understand some of the stuff mm -hmm. y'all talking about. So it's like, it's a whole world out of here of what? High level thinkers, I guess. Yes, sir. Yeah. Talk well, you, to like where did you get the thought like like when did this come about? Just for me, it was about creating meaningful content in a world that's meaningless. Mm, that's when good. something is absent, it's rare, and when something is rare, is what it's valuable. Yeah. So the goal was to look at a problem and create a solve. They would tell us that black people don't want to hear you talk long form about consciousness and psychology and science and spirituality and all of this stuff i was like no they just don't want to hear from you mm. and the problem has always been there's always been a community of educators thought leaders futurists scientists but to be honest the art was never in a museum and what i mean by that if you look at virgil blow he said if you take a can like this mm -hmm. it's just a can but if you take that and you put it on a stand and you put it in a white room in a museum, then it's art, mm. right? And so a lot of people had wow. the knowledge, but they never made it art, right? And so what we set out to do was how do you make it art? How do you put production value? Because what we're asking for is people time, right? And people time budget, they only have so much to spend every single day. Yeah. 
you're going to spend a certain amount on Netflix. So we have to compete with Netflix. We have to compete with Hulu. We have to compete with the top streamers in the world for your attention. So we started off with a formula of how do you first create great production and then secondary the content, right? Recently, I just met a, um, an artist, a Senegalese artist. His name is Boo Boo. A what right? artist? A uh, Senegalese. He's from okay. Senegal. Sen okay, I got it. Senegalese. So his name is Boo Boo, mm -hmm. right? I was in Madrid, Spain, and he was painting a painting upside down. So you don't know what it's going to be until it's finished. The, and the, the, he was upside down or the easel was upside the, down? The easel was upside down okay. as he was painting. And he does, his process is always different. He might be punching it and then it turns into Mayweather by the time you're done with yeah, it. Yeah. And you couldn't even tell. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. The guy, he would paint with his hair. Yeah, like do all yeah. All type of stuff. Yeah. But see, I always say it's not that he's technically, his art is greater than another artist. Because technically another artist can create possibly a greater art, if you would think. But his process is, mm. right? The art was always in his process. Yeah. The connection of people seeing the process was like, oh, the way he makes the art is the story. It's the narration. Then secondary, I buy the art. So I think people need to really grasp and hold this, thinking about creating a classic. We mm. sit down and always think about all layers of design, juxtaposition, production value, quality. I think about all of the different elements, psychology, so I study before I do, right? So you may not understand what I'm doing it, but I'm doing it from a background of science and knowledge that I'm putting into it. So when we first came out, and we've changed the game since then, everybody started copying the way we do B-roll, overlay text, subject matter, right? Even down to the guests that we put out, you know what I mean? The game has changed because they see meaningful content works. And long form meaningful content works, and that's you're, where we go. Long form two, three hours. Yeah, sometimes four. You do be... this this thirty minutes to an hour. That's just a breeze. So you <laughs> you're just warming up. But you know, to 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 make a um, a long story short, man, the goal was to you know create meaningful content. You know, and we did that. We set out with a goal and we executed. But we already knew it was going to be high level because not only was going to do good broadcasts, we had a great partnership and we was going to put it on the right channel to make sure that great quality content got the right audience. And that basically set us up with the right formula to win. Yeah, that's good. How important, bro, is, I want to talk about AI shortly, but mm -hmm. how important is products, man? Like I, more entrepreneurs need products. So 100%. you got the crowns, you got your gold water, you, you're always having products like how important is products right now that's how you get fat funnel and attention man you gotta you gotta it gotta go to a product like what is the point so media was always to gather attention to funnel to a product yeah. or service right that was always the point of media yeah. social media right people got on and became the product right and we started generating content so that the companies can run their advertisement on our content. Yeah. So we were just giving away intellectual property for the opportunity to possibly become famous, yep. well-known, exposure, whatever it was. So I look at media for what it is, right? Social media is advertisement. Maybe you can use it for social ramifications, protests, right? But protests still bring awareness to something, attention. The whole game is attention. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a product, then you have a business that doesn't have an end goal, mm. right? So the whole goal is you going out there, getting all of the attention in the world with nothing to sell at the end. So how do you then generate revenue so that you can continue gaining attention, exposure, and growth? Yeah. You have to have a product at the end. And the way I see the most important way to do that now, if you want to think about it, is create a community. Facilitate the value to that community, right? Most people... Thinking about growth and scale, which is great, but what you really want to do is focus on the community that you've built already and focus on giving them more value in versus trying to bring people in. Mm, so that's good. you got 100,000, 10,000 people, a million people. How do you learn your audience to give them value, learn their needs, then create products to facilitate those needs and services? Yeah. Ask the people. I always poll people in my uh, broadcast channel, right? What do you want to learn about AI? 
what do you what do you need? What are some of the products? I listen to the customers. They be like, man, your your skin's so smooth. What do you use? Yeah. So guess what? I'm gonna facilitate the product for those needs because they don't want to go outside that ecosystem. 100. It's easier if I don't. They don't have to go to somebody else who they don't trust or don't like. Yeah. Go buy a product from them and then stimulate their economy. Mm. So for me, having a product just makes sense, especially for a world where people are generating advertisement every single day or marketing every single day or creating media every single day. The funnel should always be towards a product or a service or an idea if you're trying to spread something. Because a lot of time I'm not selling a product, right? I'm trying to push the culture forward. I'm trying to shift a mindset. So that's different because I'm pushing an idea, a message, a vision. But I can't continue to do that if I don't have a product that then allows me to create profit so that I can continue to grow this enterprise. Yeah, that's good. You went against the grain with this particular concept. Um, most people say don't do business with family. Mm-hmm. And I think your concept is almost only do business with family. <laughs> so to talk through yeah. where you come up with that. How is that working? Like, how are you convincing people like, just imagine you got family members who don't want to get down. How are you? Yeah. Are you convincing them or are you just finding the people want to get down? Like, yeah. walk me through your family business process. So I always say the reason we say don't do business with family is simple because we don't have functional roles, which means we have a dysfunctional family. Mm. Right. So we have to look at what is our function. That function meets purpose. Right. What is it made for? What can you do? What are your skills? Yeah. Right. What's your art? What's your craft? What's your technology? So once you can find everybody's skill, then you can put them into position. I talked to him 500 about this. He talked about, you know, a person's skill versus the culture. Yeah. Right. And you understand a culture of something. Then you understand the values associated with it, how we move, what the vision is, what the mission yeah. is, what we're here for. If I find somebody that has good culture in the family, Right. Then we can always skill them. Mm, right. That's good. And if they have that culture and that culture meets that skill, now we can use them to be productive so that, you know, we can keep the money in the family because the world is ran by families. Yeah. Right. The Rothschild guy, he just died. He was, you know, he's one of the owners of the world. <laughs> he's a family name. Most products you look at are family names. That's true. We know this for a fact. Rolls Royce. Right. Yeah. So one of my chief things is Walkings. imagine if we got 10,000 black families, right, that all have high net worths. Now your sons and daughters can intermarry, right? Now you're creating wealth inside this circular economy. So we don't need all 45 million black people to get their ish together. We need to start with 10,000 families mm. that have a high net worth. Mm. And they're doing business and they're the leaders of enterprise, Right. So to be in the one percent of America, you got to make five point four million dollars. Right. How about we at least have families that are in the one percentile? But how do we do that? We have to create tribes and we have to set up those connections. What does your family represent? What they crest are? What is the your last name represent? What industry? Right. You do automotive. Yeah. Right. Or you do digital. Right. What do you do? AI. What do you do? So for me, it's a no brainer. But as you to answer your question directly, you know, it's been a tough journey for sure. Yeah. I'm gonna be 100% honest yeah. about that. I've had to fire family, yeah. right? And sometimes you don't wanna fire family because you think about the path they're gonna go through once they go. Mm-hmm. And I've had people, I fired them and they ended up in jail two weeks later. Wow. Right? Because they tried something criminal and it didn't mm-hmm. work out. And I gave them chance and chance and chance and chance and chance. And I knew that this was going to happen if I let them go. They was going to spiral out of control because they wasn't mature yet. But at the same time, they're not good for the business. Yeah. Not good for the culture of the business. And their skills is not meeting the requirements for us to be able to scale and grow. Yeah. And a business is a business. Yeah. Right? And the reason people say family is business because family, they think emotions. And business is logic. Yeah. And, you know, emotions don't fit in the business. So you have to have family that, number one, you can trust family that buy into the vision. Mm. If they don't buy into the vision, sure, that's a fact. Yeah, they ain't really worth nothing. Yep. I'd rather hire a stranger. 100%. Right? Dog. Because if, if you have to take ownership over this. If, if I'm taking you from your job and I say, bro, I don't want you to have to work for the white man, right? 
That's my chief belief. I don't yeah. want you to have to work for nobody, especially you flipping burgers or something. Yeah. And it's like, ah, I see more in you. Come work for us. Yeah. You got, don't take this like this is an hourly paid job, like you working for somebody else. No, this is your business. Yeah, that's you good. know what I mean? So go learn skills for this. Go educate yourself. Go read for this. You feel me? You got to hustle for this yeah. night and day so it can grow so I can continue to pay you. Because guess what? If the business start to fail, I'm not taking money out of my pocket. You getting paid from the profits of the business. You're not getting paid from my bank account. Yeah. So once that happens, you got to go. So for me, it's about having family that truly believe in it, sitting down with family, telling them what it is, because I be having to have business meetings with them, pull the whiteboard out, teach them about what's the margin of a product, right? How do we do marketing? What's branding? Tell them books to be able to read. So if you're willing to be in that leadership position, I say it's for you. Right. If you're not willing, then don't do it. How many chances do you give them? <sighs> too many. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's always too many when it comes with family. But I think you should you should set a standard where it's like, you, if you, I really think you should set a standard coming in where we're not really giving no chances. Like if I could do it over, yeah, I would. I would give. I would have gave way less chances, and then you would have been suspended and. You get your act together, maybe in three to six months you can come back. Yeah. But you got to go out there and survive on your own and go deal with the real world. Because mm. family business ain't even the real world. Yeah. You getting a way better play shelter, dealing with family. You getting help. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. So, but sit down with family. Talk to them about the business plan. See who's willing to put in that work, right? Who's willing to learn. Tell them, like, these are skills I need. You still got to put in your resume. You still got to show up. We still have standards. Yeah. And if you're willing to meet that, I'm with you. But implement suspensions, yeah, right? That's good. No pay suspensions mm -hmm. so that they understand the value of the opportunity that you give them, yeah. right? And then let them know, well, if you don't, we, we, you get one more, then you out the door. My issue was that certain family members couldn't work together. Now you bothering me when I need to be focused on something else and I got to deal with a family dispute. And I'm like, why can't y'all just figure this thing out? So it got to a point where if you can't work with her, then I got to let you go because she's running. She's the manager. You know what I mean? I can't have her mad and she can't work because now my business suffers. Yep. So, you know, those type of decisions are tough. But I think that if you can put people in roles in position, it's like building a mafia. You know, you look at families that the bankers were sending their children out all throughout the world to go set up the banks. Mm. They had put their children in different positions. You got children now, put one in computer science. Make one a lawyer, make one an engineer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Make one a politician. Yeah. Put them in position where they can be utilized for the family enterprise. Wow, that's good. I never thought about that, really. I got four kids, so all of them go do something different. Some. You know, it's like, I'm not like a Trump fan or whatever. Yeah. And we I don't know his shoes. parenting skills, but his company, his kids can go run billion dollar enterprises. Every single one of them, right? Yeah. But they, Donald, Ivanka, like, yeah. he figured that out. Like, he figured out, like, how they all could go run a billion dollar enterprise, bro. Yeah. Which, so they probably took some of that. Well, what's, what's the greatest wealth to pass down is your skills and your knowledge. Yeah. Because then if you leave them something, now they can grow it. They can use it. They can feel productive in it. You watch the shows all the time. You see the, like the show Secession and different things. A lot of times the children hear things that they don't want and they won't be good for it. They find no passion in it. Yeah. Right? So it's that balance at the same time. Yeah. Like make sure you're developing them for opportunity that they want. But the biggest thing is not passing down so-called like a business Pass down the mindset, pass down the knowledge so that whatever endeavor they take, they will be successful and your last name will continue to thrive. What's the SOP to do that, though? Is it a formula? You know what I'm saying? Like there definitely is a formula. It's like the, the, the foundation, right, is what matters. And that's the values that you set them up with, right? What is the foundation? So for me, you know, spirituality matters. The religion, that faith, that belief system is anytime they got that compass where they get lost, they're going to come back to that. Yeah. Rites of passage, right? Where does that moment market to where they become a man or a woman in a world where they feel like they can manage things for themselves? Yeah. They should have to be interns in the business, right? So even if they don't want to do it, they learn in the work ethic. Yeah. They get yeah, the knowledge of it, right? And there has to be certain rituals implemented within the family that develops them so that they can have this growth mindset throughout time. Yeah. You feel me? And so there's a way that 
you develop their mind and then after that you kind of set them on a course because you can't force them to do anything yeah. you just prepare them for the world you prepare them for it but the thing that people with money have is protection yeah they protect their children too much mm. and their children are not prepared for the world so when they leave they can't do anything with the world you built that's damn so when you say that what do you mean protect them too much like Give me some examples and how well, do you fix that? Think about black parents. Black parents are always trying to protect their children from what? The police. Yeah. You can't protect them for the police. You prepare them for encounters in the real world. Right? It's like you want to protect your daughter from boys. You don't can't protect her from boys. You prepare her how to deal with boys, how to talk to them, understand the different types she gonna deal with. Game her up. Yeah. Give her the knowledge. Yeah. Right? You're gonna go out in the world, they're gonna deal with stark capitalist sharks. Right, that's gonna want their money. You have to give them the game and prepare them for what they're gonna deal with. You go through certain tribes and they have rites of passage where you have to go out there and eat and hunt and forage on your own. What this psychologically does is it breaks them out of feeling like they need you, mm. right? And a lot of parents keep the children on the proverbial tick, you know what I'm saying? To where they feel like they gotta keep coming back to them. Instead, no, show them their capabilities. You don't praise a child for the success of what they do. You praise them for their effort. When you praise them for the success, they think they're already good and they start putting in less effort. Mm. And later on in time, they're mm. no good. When That's you good. praise them for the effort, they keep putting in effort mm. in everything that they do. That's good. So now they know how to execute. Mm. So it's the science of raising a child that has to be changed in the households. And you got to look at it so like example, that. So example, oh my God, congrats, you won that game. No, I really wow. like how hard you was hustling yeah, out there. I was, yeah. The defense was incredible. Yeah. I, I want you to go a little bit harder on that yeah. next. Yeah. Got it. That's what they going to be thinking about in every task that they do. Because yeah. like, that's how I was raised. I didn't realize it till I, this is a real science. Yeah. I realized it like, I never really got, I was never a child that was spoiled. I was never told I was the greatest anything per se. Yeah. But anytime I, I always gave effort and I never quit. Yeah. To the point where we could be fighting or wrestling, somebody be almost about to break my bone and I'm melt, go say quit. Yeah. And what people always gave me credit for was my heart. They always gave me credit for my effort because even if I was afraid, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And it made me believe in myself to where I can do anything because I'm willing to put that effort in. So when your child has that grit, which is tough that children don't have, it's that resilience, right? Where you know, something goes wrong, you get back up, you do it again. Go wrong, you get back up, you do it again. That's that resilience. That's what's missing today. Yeah. Anytime something is spoiled, what? It's bad. Yeah. So when you spoil your children and, and, and they're no longer ready and right for the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? So my whole thing is prepare. Preparation is the key. Yeah. Show, te teach them about the effort. Teach them about the science of their mind. Give them a, a foul on themselves. This is something that I think every parent should do. So every child has a Meyer Briggs type, personality type, 16 personality types that they, you can do a, a, a test on. You can do a human design test. You can do a uh, intelligence test, right? What you're doing is you're giving them knowledge of self, mm. right? This is who I am. This is why I That's think good. this. This is why I feel this. This is why I'm different. This is why I'm good at this. So now they can chart, right, their path through life based on a SWOT analysis, mm. right? They strengths and they weakness. Yep. They can assess themselves. Yes, that's good. Otherwise, you start going through your life trying to find your purpose because you don't know yourself. I've only ever done that test maybe it's 16 different ones or when you do one, it just encompasses all yeah. 16 things. What, what most people know is they astrology, a star sign. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> Aries, yeah. I'm stubborn because it is, or I'm yeah. emotional because it is sign. Like, it's like if, if you believe in star signs, and you believe in astrology, then you believe in self-assessment tests. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's good. I Go never through, about customize that. yourself, hey, your learn who, bro, if we talk about AI, that's what AI is going to be doing. Because how will people find their jobs in the future? It's going to have to be based on their strengths, not their emotions. Yeah. Right now, people are finding passions based on their emotions and the whims of what they think they want to do. And oftentimes, it's in alignment with their weaknesses and not their strengths. Mm. Right? How many rappers that's not good at it? That's their weakness. That's not their strength. Yeah. They don't even know their strengths. Because you went to school to get a grade that gave you this factory setting on your confidence of your capabilities. You got an F in this. You got a D in this. 
you probably could have been good at it, but none of your curriculum was towards your gifts and your skills and your talents. Yeah. If I did that, I would have got A's because I would have felt good about doing it, mm. right? So if there was a class on communication when I was in school and it was about communication and leadership and, yo, if you follow this path, you can become a speaker. Oh, you like thinking about the future, science and technology, you can become a futurist. Oh, you like designing, you can create products. So you creative mind, you a deductive thinker, abductive thinker. Do you think high level, low level? You focus on concept or details. You're really getting to these children. And there are schools like that, that rich people paying $20,000 a month to send their children to, to focus only on their gifts, skills, and talents. Wow. And when them children come out, and the last thing you need to do, not the last thing, but another thing. Yeah. <laughs> Words are powerful. Your children have to be around high net worth environments. 100%. I There's believe that. There's a study that, that shows that when you grow up around high net worth environments, right, there was a correlation to your wealth, mm -hmm. right? Low net worth environments. So you have to put them in networking environments. Even if you might not have it, take them there. I always took myself to places of taste. Always took myself to places of wealth. Take my places, taste, places of art. So I elevated myself beyond my circumstances. I knew people outside of my environment. I knew things outside of the judgment of what people would think that I would know for a young black kid in the hood. Yeah. So I would always observe myself from this place of, they look at me just average nigga in the hood, in the streets, because this is what the people in this environment, mm -hmm. they don't know I know this. I study philosophy, yeah. I study science, yeah. right? And if I pull that out, now they have to take me out of the box they had me in. And they like, okay, I see potential. So now they're believing in me because I changed what they thought of me, mm. right? I changed the expectation, the idea. So now they have to deal with me as I am, not who they thought I was. Wow. So in my first speech that I gave, my first paid public speaking, I did that at a school and that's what I was teaching the children, right? How to project an image, but be more than the illusion that you show. So you're always underestimated. Wow, that's good. Let me ask you this question, man. You're, you're probably the only other person that I know other than Tiffany Montgomery. Y'all will say anything y'all want online. I'm talking about <laughs> what you say earlier, don't work for the white man. Like y'all yeah. say some stuff that I'm like, bro, how are you able to yeah. say this stuff? It's like, I be, yeah. and she's like, I don't care about getting canceled. Like yeah. it's just, you just saying what, like, where you all get this courage to just be saying, you don't care what nobody, Y'all be saying stuff to me that I think is crazy yeah. that I could never say. Yeah. That y'all just say and just like, it is what it is. Like, what, what's your thoughts behind that? I think that, and this goes back to that customization. What I learned in life is sometimes you, 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 when you think about being blessed, it's because you're gifted and it's in your nature, right? The greatest tourist in the world, right? We go back to tourists. So we go back to Myers Briggs or the type of person that I am. What brings different people joy is different. What makes people feel alive is different. Yeah. For what makes me feel alive is speaking truth, mm -hmm. right? Saying things as I see them. The more I have to edit myself, the more I have to cut down myself, the more I feel shrinked. And you're not yourself. It's I'm not, not being myself at all. And you can take offense to what I say, but nothing that I'm saying is to be of offense, mm -hmm. right? And I believe that in the true world where people are liberated and it's not racism, it's not bias, it's not all of these things. It's when people say what's on their mind. If I'm talking to a white man, let's say like one of my favorite shows is Curb Your Enthusiasm, right? If I'm talking to Larry David, use the word black man. You know what I'm saying? I use the word white man. I use the word Jewish man. I'm talking to, like, I want you to say exactly the way you want to say so I'm dealing with the true you, yeah. right? The authentic you. But when we're always curving and cutting, that's when you get that behind the scenes hate. You know what I mean? Because I'm never getting the real person. And the easiest person that it is to be is your authentic self, right? Because it takes no work. So when That's you true. can become known for being you, it's no longer work. Mm. But when you got to edit yourself, it's so much work, mm -hmm. right? And so I was always taught to speak truth even if your voice trembles, mm. right? And I still tailor it and communicate in a way where I make sure that I'm not purposely intentfully trying to be harmful and make people feel a certain way. Yeah. When I say don't work for the white man, it's, it's a common saying that we say amongst black people. Mm -hmm. But what we're talking about is work for self. 
right? What we're talking about is I can think that a white man should agree that yeah, a black man should want to be able to work for another black man. A Jewish man should want to work for another Jewish man, Asian. That's self-pride in your community and your people and that's growth. But only black people get demonized for speaking their truth out loud, right? But because we have to speak it because we're not in that position where we're living it. Yeah. So we are trying to inspire and influence people with our words because the world is constantly putting us in these boxes where we can't be ourselves. And I learned the way you come in the game is the way you got to stay in the game. That's good. So if you go in a job and you super, you know, uh, 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 super tailored with everything that you do, and one day you act a little ghetto or something, they, whoa, what's going on with you, Jamal? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. man, you listen to 19 Keys, what's going on? But if you come in there day one, like, what's up with you? Peace, God, some Lego. You know what I'm saying? What's happening? They have an expectation, a molded impression. That's who you are. That's who they have to deal with. When you change that image, that's when people become uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So I always went into the place being myself. So therefore, you have an expectation. Now, if I revert it down, then you would be like, well, I thought he was one of them ones. You know what yeah. I'm talking about? Why he ain't saying things the way that they are? Yeah. So, you know, I think that, uh, but back to the customization, Everybody is different. We all have different perspectives. If there's 16 personality types, some are like 2% in the world. If you meet people that have a 2% personality type, that means 98% of the people that you meet won't think, feel, judge, or see the world like them, right? So sometimes people look at themselves and say, you know, why am I so different? Or why don't nobody understand me? It's because you're rare, mm. right? And you're not uh, appreciating the rare qualities that you possess, Right. You have a rare ability to create value, to move people, to speak in a certain way. Right. To bring the value out of other people and see the value out of other people. Yeah. It's not a lot of people on the planet Earth that can do that. Yeah. Right. Your whole circle has rare abilities that common men don't have. So how do you create your fortune and your wealth? You double down on that. Mm. My ability to articulate, which is not something that I feel like I was just inherently gifted with, but something I developed yep. over time because I recognize, like, I got a gift. Let me double down on that because I look at wealth not just in the form of, like, physical assets or monetary assets. I look at it as your traits. Yeah. I was born as tall, dark, and handsome. Ability to communicate. You know what I mean? I had to develop charisma. That's wealth that a, a, a man that is balding, short, that has money, that can't communicate, that's nerdy, that don't have social ability and skills, right? He would pay millions for. Yeah. But I already possess that. Yeah. So I'm gonna use my wealth and leverage that wealth. Yeah. So I look at wealth in this holistic manner to where it's your traits, your values, your skills, all of your assets, then you add that up. So we don't know how to appreciate the wealth that we have because we're always judging the wealth another man has. It's mm. good, man. I've been wanting to talk about AI since we started and we just been going down a rabbit hole and you've been talking about AI for a long time, right? Yes, sir. I've been at, uh, I went to Davos uh, in Switzerland with Shadi yeah. and Troy earn your leisure yeah. and it was pretty much the largest gathering of billionaires. You had the guy who owned, Sam Altman, who owned OpenAI yeah. there. You just had all of these people there and everything, every banner, everything was all AI, everything. Mm -hmm. And I often hear like, by the time we hear about it, it's often too late. Like you've yeah. been talking about it, using this to grow your business, uh, like run your teams for years now. Mm -hmm. And, but how they're talking about, they're like, AI is everything, it is the future. If you don't figure it out, and we was talking offline, like you will be replaced. Like, yeah. I want you to talk about like, what. What is AI for someone listening, right? And how do we need to be using this to start growing our businesses and mm. growing ourselves, right? Yes, now? sir. Yeah. So it's a great question. AI is just all talking about intelligence. The new product in the world is intelligence. The ability to solve problems, the ability to get things done, large language models, text to speech, text to action. Instead of you spending time and action doing basic things, you can now have machines doing for you to where you can utilize it and make as much money as possible. If that's something that interests you, the skill sets of the future, I'm here to teach it. And this is going to be the biggest AI training conference in the 
the world. And it's gonna be digital where you get to be on that call to learn everything that we do step by step, getting the instructions, getting the education to where you essentially being able to automate the process. We teach you how to look at these tours in a way to where when you see them, you see opportunities, you create opportunities and you can teach other people. So now you have a value. Anybody that wants to get in, you can get in, that's your choice. But the Platinum members, they have an opportunity to be able to sit directly and get counsel and consultation to make sure that they execute at the highest level. It's an investment in yourself. When you learn how to create value, the money chases you. And that's what we're going to be giving you. Make sure y'all tap in to the AISupremacyChallenge.com. Make sure you become a platinum member and come execute with us to reach your highest level. I'm 19 Keys, I'll see you there. AI is a technology. Technology that has been pondered by and philosophized about by man for over a century, yeah. right? It's not new. Yeah. Um, but when we talk about technology, technology can be broken down as this meaning of art, skills, and craft, right? When we think about technology, you always think about like a machine or software, but there's financial technology, it's mental technology, right? It's your art, skill, and craft. It's the way we put together things, right? Yeah. How we combine machine software and how we base it off the human mind, right? So, you know, it's been around for probably about 50 years as far as people being able to use them, wow. but more so enterprises being able to use them, commercial developers, not for retail. Yeah. But let's take the artificial off and deal with a, and just deal with the intelligence part. So now the question is very simple when you think about it, what is intelligence, right? It's just built off the human mind and our abilities to think, right? To solve complex problems, uh, our ability to communicate, express language, right? So it's built off the neocortex of the mind. Somebody to look up is Ray Kurzweil. He's been talking about AI for a very long time in the age of machines. And he talks about how, you know, man being able to study the neocortex, what he did was built a machine with the similar capabilities. Our ability to think high level is because we have the intuitive factors within our brain to where we can think abductive and deductive. So when we marvel at intelligence, we're talking about our ability to think and solve problems, our ability to calculate, to do math, right? So what we did is we look at human intelligence and say, how can we create a similar version of that in a software or a machine? Yeah. And then we call that artificial intelligence, mm. right? So, hey, you can speak. I wonder if I can create a machine that can speak. Well, how do you speak? Let me look at the neural processes in your brain and see if we can create a machine that can follow that same neural process. So they have machine learning, they have deep learning, right? You're talking about where a machine is learning itself. So when it does one task, it learns to do that task better and better and better. It's just like human beings. There's some people that are, have a niche intelligence. A person may be able to do, let's say they can write a book. They're good at that, but they can't run a business. Yeah. So you don't go for that person for business intelligence. You go for them for, right, uh, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, authorship, if you will. Yeah. Or I was trying to find book intelligence, yeah. <laughs> just to throw out a word. But I'm going to go there and say, hey, can you edit this for me? Right? That's the niche I know that you're good yeah. at. Right? So... You're going to give them then what? An order, which in the artificial intelligence world we call a prompt. So this is what I need this to sound like me, right? Okay, what does that mean? So if you tell a machine that it's too general, so what do we have to do? We have to come down and condense that order. Well, I want it to be charismatic. I want it to be funny, but I want it to be serious. I would like for you to put in statistics and data to back up all of my points and put in references. Um, I would like for you to put in some quotes in the middle of each page. And that's right? a prop. It's telling it exactly right. what you need it to do. So this is what we do when we have employees, right? We're telling them specific instructions to get the best results out of them yeah. based on their intelligence to understand that instructions and their skill set to execute it, yeah. right? So even though you asked what is artificial intelligence, I'm kind of jumping to where we are now with it. So if, you know, you have this, niche intelligence that's good just for that now if you have a general intelligence yeah. right you are like a general intelligence you can do multiple things yeah. so 
I may say, hey, Neil, I need a book yep. on financing that's going to make me a lot of money. Yep. You know what I'm saying? You can take that and you be like, all right, I got a few variations of an idea yep. that I can submit to you. Yep. This is how we can run the play. Yep. Right? That's general intelligence. If you can do that right now to a machine and it has this understanding, because what are you going to do? You're going to analyze the data you know about me. You're going to analyze all of the data that you know. Yep. And if you don't know, you're going to do what? You're going to go research. online, do Figure research. Yeah. So this is what the machine would do, right? It's going to go and do that research. It's just based on how and human this, beings operate. you say machine for someone listening to in this time? Is that a chat GPT? Is that a Sora? Is that... What are when you say a machine? Are those examples of the machine right now? Yeah. Open so AI. Open AI um, is a company that was first started to be open source, right? Meaning that anybody can utilize the code, right? Uh, and it start, I believe, as a um, nonprofit, right? But of course, they needed money to continue to grow, and it ended up becoming a for-profit model. So Open AI is. Uh, ChatGPT almost can be looked at as an AGI, an uh, artificial general intelligence model now, right? Because of all its capabilities. Yeah. So we have all these language of text too, right? So text too is like text to image was like a mid journey. So mid journey, you can do text to image and say, hey, create me a picture of a black man sitting on a horse with a crown on. Now, because it's general, right? It's just going to come up with the best image reference that it knows. Then you can get more specific. Do you want it an AK? What's the resolution you want? Yeah. Do you want it to pan out? Do you want it to be far? What's the complexion? Because wow. you don't know what they think a black man is. Yeah. Right? So you have to get, I would say, an American black man with brown skin. <laughs> right? So that I'm getting more specific on a horse with the sunlight beaming at this degree. The more specific you can get, then it's like giving an employee technical instructions because you know they're not that smart. Right. I need to tell you exactly what to do because I know you're not just going to have an intuitive understanding. Mm. But what the AI does is constantly learn you. So you tell it to make one picture and say, oh, you get good feedback. This is really good. I like the way you did that. So it's going to say, okay, I know what you're looking for now. So it creates a data set on you and a profile of when you say things, this is what you mean by that. Mm. Right? That's good. So so when we're talking they say about training the AI. Yeah, yeah. And this is why these large models of AI like ChatGPT was it reached, you know, hundred million users so fast. And with all of the people using it, it's being trained. Mm. Right? So by you we using the AI, it. the people are training it. Wow. It's telling it what it means by certain things, how to think, right? So it's gonna get to a point where the AI is just gonna be customized based on you, right? So imagine if there's just an AI that's only not trained on just the world's knowledge, not trained on the world's language, but is only trained on Nehemiah Davis' language. Mm. That means that it can only speak like you, yeah. right? That means that it only has the thoughts that you tweet, only has the thoughts of your YouTube video, yeah. only have the, the articles that's written on you in the news, only has the stories that you share, the DMs. So it only has data on you, so it can't mm. get it wrong. Mm. So it's going to sound exactly like you, and it becomes your digital twin, right? So as we're dealing with artificial intelligence, right, we're dealing with um, the duplication of human intelligence, right, in a technology, software, hardware form. Wow. So basically, people better get people better get abreast. I mean, get get with it. Let me ask you. So I'm new. I want to build the business with AI. What's the first thing you're telling me? Like, what, what should I be focusing on right now? I want to build an agency. I, like, I want to service other people because although you're saying all of this, there's still going to be people not yeah. going to do anything with this, which yeah, I no. feel as though it's a huge opportunity. Like you said something earlier, I can go create a book for somebody in two days. I mean, a lot less time, but with AI from start to yeah. finish. Right. Right. And now I could go sell it on your behalf and just split that with somebody. Right. That's a whole business. Go yeah. do that with multiple people. Is there, what, what are some things or, hey, I want to start, like what's some recommendations? So I start with this formula, artificial intelligence plus natural intelligence equals enhanced intelligence, mm. right? So you think about, you already have a set of skills, the things that you know. Yeah. You know how to create a book. Yeah. But let's say the way you create it is more manual, yeah. right? Now what I would do is show you how to save time and money, right? So you can get things done in a quicker amount of time and get greater results. 
So I say, Nehemiah, this is the way you can create, this is the way you can use these tools to automate your process. Yeah. Tell me what your flow is. Yeah. Tell me how many different softwares mm. you use in your business. Wow. Right? That's good. How you communicate with your team. Where's the dashboard of how you inflow money? How do you know when they're getting tasks done? What projects they're working on? So guess what? I can create a flow, right, to take all of your softwares and I can put it on one dashboard so you can operate your whole business from one screen. Mm. Right? So now I say, is that valuable to you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, it, I can set it up for you. It's going to cost you, let's say I set it up, do the whole thing. Man, I charge you $25,000. Mm. That's a business yeah. that I now have. Wow. Right? Even if I show you how to do it, guess what? You're not going to want to do all that. Yeah. Right? Because there's a lot of technical stuff still that you got to do. So you're going to say, I ain't got time for all that crap. You probably going to use the word crap. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> can you set it up for me? Yeah. Or you know what? How much would you charge to just have this um, as a monthly service? Yeah. So how about we just retain you and then monthly just charge us like 3000 bro. Yeah. You feel me? And wow. then just constantly get our services together. Wow. Right? So you can learn our business. I would need to learn your needs. Right? Yeah. I need to learn your infrastructure. Once I have that. I can look at how to create more efficiency within your business. Mm. I just created a value. Mm. Then here's the thing about AI and anything. Once you become a thought leader, you become a leader in a sense to where you can teach other people. People don't feel like learning all this. 100%. Everybody not going to put in that $10,000. If you're willing to, you just skilled yourself and created a business for yourself because you have value that other people need. So you can now go teach other people. So I say, hey, bro. There's photographers right now that uh, go lose their job. Not go lose it, but they can be replaced by amateurs that cost less. So if you're a photographer, you're in a business, you know all these editing skills. You're proficient in Photoshop and you know how to get the lighting right. You know how to do all of this stuff. So you feel like, man, there's a large gap between people taking my job, right? Because of the skills and experience that I have versus a person that for the first day they pick up a camera, Right. They don't know anything about photography. Yeah. And they say, yo, Nehemiah, can, I, I want to be uh, I want to shoot your party next week. You know what I'm saying? And let's say your photographer go charge you, let's say two thousand dollars. And then somebody come and undercut, say, bro, I do it for five hundred dollars. Don't even worry about it. Yep. You say, what's your resume? You're like, well, I ain't, re I ain't really got no resume, but I got the camera. And you say, well, I need them done. Right. This is what they do. Can you do this? And you say, you know what? I'm trying to save money. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a risk on you. Yeah. So what the person gonna be like? Look, this is what I have. They got this software that you can put a hardware you can put on your camera to where you take the camera and then the AI will edit the pictures for you. So maybe you didn't get the right lighting. So it will take the data from that image and then add the lighting on top of that. Hmm. Right? Maybe you didn't get a border of the picture and it wasn't correct. Now it's gonna take that and then it's gonna add that border. Right? It can stitch pictures together. So what does that do? The software and the hardware is the skills and the experience. So now I don't need the skills and the experience, yeah. right? So now you're able to save money, right? And this person has a new job because there's new software that gives them the ability to create value as a service and undercut the people who are paying these prices. So it's not that this photographer has to be priced, but he don't understand that his services are not as valuable anymore and he has to have a new price. Yeah. So what he could do is say, you know what? Because we have AI, and this is something that I think all people should do, we have AI and we're going to change some of the prices to our services because it's, it's more time efficient for us to do this, right? And it's cheaper for us to get it done, right? So now I'm not going to charge you as much. You're going to be like, thank you, because I was glad to hire somebody to replace you. Yeah. <laughs> so this is how you start to make yourself AI proof. Yeah. You know what I mean? Is you replace yourself. So you're learning the text to image. You're learning the AI editing because... You may have this purest idea about your, you know, uh, a job or career, but the people who need to save money and time, they don't care about all of that. Yeah. They just need it done. So I go in there, I shoot a whole wedding for somebody and never have shot a wedding before. Wow. And if my pictures can look like the most professional photographer in the world, guess what? You got your memories, you got the great wedding photos, and you save five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people are going to be like, you're giving too much sauce because now these people are going to be changing the wedding plans and finding somebody to get that done. But that's the reality. I'd rather give you the game now before the game smacks you down. Wow. You feel me? So we got 
So you just showed them how to do a physical business, mm -hmm. meaning if you are a physical person. Yeah. So essentially, they need to look at ways to use AI in their physical business. Yes. Then you show them how to do the digital business by digital basically business. going to go build and optimize what someone already got right. going on and help them create a product. Yeah. I think that's going to be another key, helping yeah. them create a product that helps them generate revenue. Right. And I manage that process. Here, and, and yeah, everything you just said is 100% right. Like, everybody should be using AI in their business. Yeah. That's just a simple fact, right? Whether you like AI or not, it doesn't matter. Your feelings don't matter when it comes to new technological shifts. There are signals and there are triggers to let you know the world has changed. And the world has changed. Yeah. Tyler Perry just decided to not go forward with his $100 million project. I think it was $800 right? million. $800 million dollar project because Sora AI. came out. Yeah. Sora comes out where it has the ability to create videos just by text prompting. Now, I've been talking about this for a while before it was ever anybody ever said anything about text to video because I automatically understood the rapid advancement of these tools has to eventually go to the next iteration. Yeah. So AI pictures, it then it goes to AI video. But when you have AI video, what do you need? You need sound on that. So instead of hiring a sound engineer, which is very expensive for a project that you want to create a movie or you have a set, now you have an AI that can put sounds right to your videos, mm. which they have to come together. Because otherwise, if you got a video, and no sound, <laughs> how are you going to create it? Yeah. So what's going on as well? They got a new thing called Feather. What they're going to do is make these tools easier for the average person to use them so they can have better onboarding processes. But still, with every technology, people don't like using them. Mm. So the value is you using it for them, right, to create that. But how many new business models can come out of that? It's, it requires creative thinking. Yeah. See, when I can tell you how to use it, right, I can give you, this is how you do the AI income, this is how you use it. But the most valuable thing is how to think about it, right? Because when you learn how to think about it and you can think creative, which is an adjustment I really want to give people, now you know how to use it and mm. all of the different ways you can go about using it. Mm. So you see there's somebody that get chat GPT and they say, oh, they call it a language model, but that doesn't mean that's how I got to interact with it, right? To me, this is a business model, right? Uh, huge business. <laughs> yeah. Writing to, somebody emails. Exactly. Like you could charge somebody a thousand dollars, two thousand a month for doing the email every day. Yeah, you go and they can GPT. know you using ChatGPT, right? And they can, yeah. That's the people don't care. Listen, I, 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 you can, I know you're using a software. That's not matter. Are you saving me time and money and making me time and money? Right, not just saving. You're making me time and money. Make people time, and make people money. They won't, and they will pay you forever. Right. Mm. So. I can go to whole companies and teams hey, and hey, teach them this. T plus M yeah. equal F-E. Time plus money. Time and money. Forever. See, so your team is your, 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 your time, energy, and money. Yeah. So you save people team. You feel me? Time, energy, and money. That's the goal. So I think with this AI, it's going to continue to change the world. Hey, guys, if you're looking at this right now, I want y'all to stop what you're doing. Go to AISupremacyChallenge.com. And what I want y'all to do, man, Keys is having a virtual event where he's going to literally show you how to leverage AI in your business, in other people's business. Just think about the concept. Imagine you write emails for somebody. You charge them $1,000 to $2,000 a month. Right, you use an AI to do all of it, and then you go get five clients giving you two thousand dollars a month. You now at ten thousand dollars a month off of the game that he's going to share. They're going to show you how to do all things AI. So go to AISupremacyChallenge.com, get your ticket. I'm going to be locked in just like you learning because I need to know how to make more money with AI and also how to save more time with it. So make sure y'all tap in. Let me give you another guy editing. Mm. Everybody is doing media right now. 100. Everybody is doing podcasts. That's a huge thing. Yeah, huge. So they have tools out there that you can go utilize right now to this day. And it will chop it up from one minute to three minute to five minute to 10 minute to 15 minute clips. Yeah. Right. So that's very valuable for a business. Right. As soon as you make a podcast, first thing you should do is go get it transcribed, take that transcription, upload it onto the description of the YouTube channel, so it cuts everything into chapters. Mm. Second thing you should Cut do- Cut everything into chapters? Into chapters. Okay. The chapters basically put a title on 
the yeah. different um, time marks of what you are talking about in that video. Yeah. So if a person want to skip to this video and go, when we talking about AI, they can now go through the video and be like, okay, 45 minutes in, they started talking about AI, I'm clicking here, start watching it from there, right? This now allows people to be able to watch your video without having to watch the whole thing. They can watch sections of it. What software? Taja.ai. Okay, got it. Right? Um, no, that one is, so it's two of them. It's Taja.ai and Opus Clips, yep. mm -hmm. right? So you so use- Taja do the timestamps, right. Opus do the video edits. So Taja is going to connect to your YouTube channel, yeah. optimize your YouTube channel as well. So it's learning the data, wow. it's learning the type of videos that you do, learning your language at the same mm. time. Mm. So not only that, it can create thumbnails, right? We haven't used it for thumbnails yet because it can't create them better than me yet, Yeah. right? Um, it can create clips, so it'll give you a score to let you know what's the best clips to read. I'm talking about Opus, yeah. right? I'm kind of talking about both of them. Yeah. You all can go utilize the tools and figure them out. We'll yeah. put a, a link up there. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing. You can go get the thumbnail. You can go get the, the possible titles for each and every single uh, clip that you put out. Right. Then it can give you a possible description. And because it's learning of your YouTube, it will automatically generate to say, OK, AI supremacy challenge dot com in there yeah. because they know your information. So they're going to study like, OK, you got a challenge going on right now. So in the description, they're going to say 19 keys is talking about AI. You guys should really join his challenge. Yeah. Right. To optimize. So let's go put the text number down there. It's doing all your work. Wow. But here's the thing. With everything, you got to make edits, yeah. right? If I give everybody that cheat code and be like, all right, now go create a business to where you DM in every influencer you know and you ask them if you can create clips to optimize their channel, right? And so what you do is you'll go, go grab a clip from a podcast that they ain't put out yet, right? And, or that they have already put out rather, because all you got to do is grab a YouTube link yep. and it'll automatically process. You grab that clip and you say, okay, this is a clip that I think that if you drop this, it's going to perform very well, right? You tell them why you think it's going to perform well. They drop it, it performs well, you got a client, wow. right? But here's the thing, and this is why you got to have some creative agency intelligence. If everybody uses the tools and everybody content looks the same way, so I don't want you to do that, yeah. right? I want you to then go take some other tools and remix it. So there's going to be a little bit of work, but this is how you can create a client, right? By instead of you having an editor that's taking hours and days, <laughs> you're cutting this down literally in minutes. Yeah. Right. Like Opus, you could do like you feed a video and it'll give you 20, 30 clips in a 20, couple minutes. 20, 30 clips. But see, when you go to Opus, there's a little editing that you got to do to make sure it's starting at the right spot and ending at the right spot, which yeah. we'll talk about in the challenge. So it's not just the technical of what to do, it's how you're gonna go about doing it. So like I said, if I give 20 people that same thing, maybe one or two people is gonna actually use it in a different way to come up with better clips, right? Because you also have to have the psychology and know what works. What is the hooks that you wanna use at the same time, yeah. right? What should be on the front of the video? So now at the same time, you're saving money, you're saving time, you're making money, you're making time. Now, you just gave them a value and now you have a value. So we're going to teach you how to use it, not just what to use, right? How to think about the tools in a different way to create income because it's democratized. Everybody got access. Yeah. But the way you use it, that's going to set you apart. Mm. We'll be like, hey, Keys, yeah, I know you use Opus, but look, the way you use it, not the same way we're using it. Yeah. This is the value we're getting for clients. This is what we can do for you. Instead of DMing people saying that, yo, I want to create clips for you, create a clip for them already. Bro, how many DMs you get a day with that? I'm like, yo, y'all want to know the hack? Instead of DMing me and asking, can I do it? Just do it. Just and do if it. I like it, I might work with it. Bro, that's the easiest thing. How many people thing. work with me, bro, who started by just doing the thing? I think people miss out on a free model all day long. It's you a, know what I'm saying? It's a six or seven figure business on a free model. Just want to go give this stuff away. That's the best clients. Cause, cause number one, you're not asking, you're giving, yeah. right? When you come to giving somebody, it's already a value there. Automatic, the relationship starts off with value. Hey Keys, I edited this video. I did this for you. I created this summarize of it. I created this newsletter for you. The newsletter play is even crazier. Oh man. We create the newsletter, get advertisers. newsletter right now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We can set up the play for you. But imagine, like you're saying, y'all setting it up, and I know you're going to be teaching how to do that in your event, but imagine you come to somebody like you or me. Hey, 
I already created your newsletter. All I need you to do is send this out. Let mm -hmm. me know what you let right. me know what they think right. about it. Right. You think I'm gonna say no? Here's the first three funnels. Done? Yeah. First three funnels free. You use them. Even that. Even just imagine like, hey, I just wanted to. Uh, I created you some videos. Here's the captions you can use. Like almost imagine they run you, go create a prompt. They run all your videos through whatever you, whatever software it is. Get the tone of my voice, articles that I wrote, all of those things. And they go give me 10 emails. Most right. people aren't emailing their people every day or even once a week. Right. See, and you could do it for them or you can say, I train you or train your team. Yeah. Because if I come to you and be like, look, we did three emails. Uh, we did three funnels for a newsletter. Yeah. You look at them. These professional, these is raw. You like, this shit clean. Yeah. I know my team can't do this yeah. right now. So what's the next follow up, right? You want us to do this for you, right? Or we can we can give you step-by-step -step instructions how we did it and I'll sell that to you, Yeah. right? Crazy. So odds are, you know what? Man, I'd rather just buy it and then tell my team to learn it and then have them execute because I'm already paying the team. Mm. Either way, you making money, money that you wouldn't have made. Yeah. Let me ask you, how far off are we? Sam was saying, I don't, uh, I may be wrong, but he said you can build a billion dollar company or a million dollar company soon with AI with one person. He said a billion dollar company. I want to make that's why billion I with a, it sounds it sounds billion so, with a big boy B. Yeah, it sounds so crazy. Yeah. That's why I didn't I didn't know. But he's so talking about you gonna be able to do that with like just AI? Just AI. That's because crazy. think about it. So this is some of the stuff we're gonna be talking about. How to utilize these tools to create a funnel flow, right? So there's like maker.ai where you can utilize tools to create a funnel flow, right? Basically take all the tools you use and you put them in a funnel. You probably heard of Zapier, yeah, right? Of but we gonna be doing that with AI, right? So you may want to integrate ChatGPT with Midjourney, wow. with Taja, with, and we wow. create a flow system that That's automates crazy. it. You I know what I mean? Of, the same way I got all this crap connected with Zapier. Right. You doing that with just all the AI tools? Yeah. And so Ooh, here's the thing. That's crazy. You have half of your employees are chatbots, half of them are real humans. Yeah. Right? You're a solopreneur. It's only one person that owns the company. Yeah. Right? You create a super niche of something that you do, right? It could be creating newsletters for people. And now you could be doing it for so many people, getting so much money on the back end, being able to scale yeah. without having to spend more money. Right? Because how do you create those business? You have to build a billion dollar business. You don't just make a billion dollars. You build a business. Yeah. Right? But your ability to scale is the difference. Right? Without having extra overhead cost. So now your margins are higher. Your profits are higher. So you're constantly making more and more money. People go be building. There's, there's an a, a AI out here where it helps people save money. So I wish I had the lady name. Um, but she created a company and this she created it's using ai no code ai right because you got people now they got to do coding and software but now they got no coding where you're basically just designing it yeah and this is something i i, I have an interview with my brothers over at cheat code and i told people the future in coding is designing mm. you just need to know how to design the site yeah. right specific instructions is good leadership talking to ai Number one, you have to be firm with AI, <laughs> which means you're supposed to be nice with it. Otherwise, it just tell, it could tell you no. Yeah. And you say, no, don't tell me no, get it done. Yeah. So AI is a language model. It's just trying to figure out the next word to say. So you have to give it strict instructions. But anyway, you she created a, uh, a app, right? A no code app to where she wanted to save money herself. So what she did is she created an app that creates a flow that connects all of your financial technology together, right? So your bank with your other apps, your budget calculator or whatever it be, track your spending, yeah. right? So now she allowing, and she created a community at the same time and connected the community to it as well and giving you education, mm. right? All in this one app ecosystem. So now people are able to get to their savings, right? And get to the budgets that they wanted to get to. Now, the same thing can be done with net worths, right? Instead of just saving, like, what do you want your net worth to be? Yeah. So a lot of people have a hard time because they're not tracking, right? And I believe that this is the great thing where AI is going to get to the tracking. You have your bank account. So now you got ChatGPT telling you, look, I ain't going to lie. You didn't spent a lot of money on clothes this month. Mm. Now, here's the thing. This is your goal. You want to get to a million dollars. So we just calculated, this AI talking to you, we calculated that if you cut down 
30 percent financial advisor then. yeah if you count down your spending on retail clothing by 30 percent you'll get to your goal right 20 percent faster and this is the date you'll get to your goal based on us calculating your spending you cut down food right you cut down costs you don't go out you skip this day now you're generating tools that people can use. That's a billion dollar business just within itself. So you mm. might have to bleep this part out because I might have to put the app out first day. Yeah. Out. <laughs> but as in a way to where I can spitball and come up with a creative solution that fast, which literally can be a billion dollar business yeah. because it solves so many problems by one person, by one software, by streamlining these applications together, the game is over. This 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 last thing I leave you with on this subject is called so you have text to video, text to sound, you have um, text to image, right? You got you got videos where you could just it's you talking, it ain't you. Yeah, text to action. Wow. So text to action is the idea that I tell AI, hey, I want to build a business, um, but I want a business that's low cost, high margin. I don't want it to be a physical product. I want a software product. Um, I'm going to need guerrilla marketing. I don't want to spend that much money on advertisement, right? I want clean, minimalistic aesthetic. Um, I want something that's completely aligned with my brand, um, something that's aligned with the times that'll do good in the next three to six months, right? Can you come up with an idea? And then I need you to come up with the top three ideas. I'm going to pick one. And then I need you to start utilizing the tools to put together the business. So I'll give you access to my Chase. I'll give you access to my Shopify. I'll give you access to my Stripe. I'll give you access to my email accounts. You start running the business. The more specific you can get, you just go text to action. So Wait, there's got skill that sets. Or? That's what being created. Yeah. And this is like the whole idea of creating a funnel is to be able to do this. So the skill set and what is that? That's it's how you build the communication by yourself. What yeah. you just said. So that's that's that that skill set where you know at first they'd be like, so you got to have some experience so you can tell it what to do specifically, or because AI is just like having the smartest people in the world work for you, right? But where do you go tell the smartest people in the world to do? If you have a vision, you can give them a very detailed vision of what you need to get done. They can tell you why it can't be done or why it can be done, right? And then they can go out there and execute. So we need to teach people how to communicate, how to prompt, how to get creative, what tools to use, how to use the tools, right? Then you got the investing side, right? I see the future, and if I follow that thesis, right, where it will go. So if you don't want to do AI, what about you invest in AI or the infrastructure of AI? So NVIDIA is directly with the infrastructure of AI, which is why it's booming, because you're talking about processing power. NVIDIA is AI making AI. The AI is making the chips and creating more chips. Right. So now you have a trillion dollar company that's essentially being ran by AI. Yeah. That's what an NVIDIA is. We're going to we're, we're so you invest in, you know, the chips in a company, you invest in the AI companies that's going to be hot. Some of them go boom and some of them go bust. You have a boom bust cycle with it. Then you got AI crypto. Crypto is booming right now. Right, Bitcoin just hit its all-time high again. Yeah, so it was like fifty-six thousand. It's at it's at what is it at today? Let me let me let me look at it. What is it at right now? I always get them beautiful I notifications. I, I know it's always like that. It's always like that. Bitcoin is at sixty thousand right now at the moment, God, and it went up to like sixty-three. Mm, mm, right. Mm. So here's the thing about all these things. Uh, we always wait till it's too late, and then when it's too late, it looks like a great deal, right? Uh, I don't want that to be with AI. I want you to get ahead of it now. Look for your new opportunities, new skills. Put your children in it, right? Sit down as a family and learn it. Go over your business, whether you have a multi-million dollar business or whether you're just starting up as an entrepreneur. This is easy to learn, get in, develop these skills over these weeks with us so you can be ahead of the game. Crazy. That's the goal. I don't care if you got a clothing business. Yeah. You use software in that clothing business. You got to do editing, photography. You want to do product placement, change the background, shadows, lighting. You want to create marketing, email campaigns, so you whatever want to show it them is. All of this. Yeah, Income, that's the game. Everything. And you should have your team in it, so your team is sitting there learning it. So when you want to get things done faster, cheaper, and better, they can go out there and execute. Wow. Because how are you going to compete and create a barrier to competition if your team is not the most effective and efficient at these tools out here? Bro, you know, you, you talk about this. Like, let me tell you this, though. It's like, bothers me to think about it sometimes. But I'm like, I've been telling my team for a year. I'm like, yo, just 
I need a full time, and this would be dope because I'm assuming how you're breaking this down, someone will be able to do. I need a full time AI integrator. Yeah. That's all they yeah. do. You're a full time. How much you willing to pay them? Between five to ten K a month, right? Something mm. like that. Mm. And I'm just, I'm just using that for all of this off the top. But think about how instantly you need that, and okay. you have a budget, and you're willing to pay because you know that, the I value. Know anyone and, and everybody I, I got a needs whole it. Team. Everybody, there's nobody that don't need it. Some people made when the internet came around, e-commerce came out. How many, how many businesses that had hard, a uh, uh, physical location didn't want to get into e-commerce? Yeah. Right then, they were forced to get into it because there's no traffic flow like that digital traffic flow. Right, I had a physical store, but I realized that I could have ten thousand customers in a day. They had never flowed through my store downtown Oakland that I had. So what did I did? I shift my focus to what was the most efficient thing to do and the most effective thing to do. So everybody's going to have to do that with AI. How do you create that barrier to competition? Right, with democratized access to intelligence, because AI is intelligence as a product, mm. and everybody having access to that. So it's an equal playing field, but the way you use it is going to be the difference. Yeah. So if Tyler Perry is looking at Sora as competition, and you have access to Sora, you become Tyler Perry's competition. That's crazy. Now, can't you make movies now? Make me a show like Medea that does make people funny for black people, that does this. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Damn. And they got these text models where you can change the lips. There's so many different things. Like we use, we got the voice cloning system, yep. right? You have the ones where you can clone the face. Um, you have the ones where you can, you know, utilize that to create custom videos where it says every person name in the email. Yep. Yeah. Right. So now, and I hey, about it's that 19 six keys. Months ago, but it ain't done yet. Yeah. That's, so you, you know, know the AI integrator, bro. It's, it's gonna sort of, be crazy. So bro. imagine they come learn with you. And now they get all these skills. Now they could become an AI integrator for somebody. Yeah. Now, they may don't have to really work 40 hours a week. Mm -hmm. They may give, because they're using AI five to 10 hours a week. Yeah. What if you go be an AI integrator for mm -hmm. five accounts? Right. AI integrator. And so. The AI integrator. That's SAS. It. Yeah. SAS is not like Atlanta SAS. Like SASE. You know what I'm talking about? It's software as a service. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. See, that's the stuff you're saying. I'll be like, bro, I don't got nothing to do with none of that, bro. Yeah. It's software as a service, yeah. right? So what are the best business models coming up? Billion dollar business models, multi-million dollar business models right now. Software as a service. Every time, this is why I don't like dropping a lot of AI. So we got, if you go to thewarehouse.ai, we have, there's a plethora of tools of AI that you can go through and just look at all the use cases yeah. for, right? But this is somebody else's SaaS, yeah. right? To where every time I'm using the software, I'm making somebody money. So an entrepreneur like you, right? We go over all the use cases of things you use in your business, and we go create a SaaS that everybody else can use as well. So as it's solving a problem for us, we're making money as we're solving a problem for everybody else. Mm. So these are multi-million dollar businesses because now your income is automation. I created in 2020... I had uh, mobilization, automation, digitization equals SADS, right? Mm -hmm. Stress, um, anxiety, depression, suicide. So I was talking about as the world becomes more automated and digitized, right? You're going to have to have these new skills that meet the challenge of what are going to be the new jobs in the future. Um, you're going to have to go through a reskilling process and you got to focus on, you know, the future now. So we gave a breakdown on like, what are the things you should invest in? What are the skills you should have? What are the industries to focus on? What are the type of business models you should create? We had a whole thesis laid out, a whole course that I taught, and we gave that to the world. Now we're living in that. Like all my old content is now current news. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And then we said the sads because we learned that as the world becomes digitized, your ability to deal with this digital world, emotional IQ starts to decrease. And that stress and that anxiety and that depression starts to increase. And we seeing that happen now. Social media in New York, they said that there's a mental health crisis because of it, mm -hmm. right? So there's this mindfulness with technology you wanna implement as well. There's digital detoxing that you wanna do. Part of the reason you wanna set up these automation is so you don't have to be in front of the screen so much, yeah. right? So that your employees don't have to be there. You wanna increase the enjoyment and the life and the lifespan of your peoples. So as we're going through this world, where did the financial education, right, and the financial influencer and the education influencer space go to? 
I started off telling people about, it started off with motivation. Mm -hmm. Motivational speakers was out there killing it, right? You take people like E.T., you know what I mean? Talking about you got to want success as much as you want to breathe. He was giving people a motive, a reason to move. Then you have people that was like inspiration. You look at Nipsey Hussle. He was out there inspiring. I'm showing you what I do. As you watch what I do, you get invigorated with the spirit of what I do, and it makes you want to do it as well. Then it became education. I want to teach you how I'm doing it, right? This one, you see all the education, uh, 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 the education uh, content start to pop up. It boomed in 2020 because people had more focus on things that was important versus entertainment. And they had to figure out how to make some money. They had to figure out how pandemic. to make some money. And they don't realize we in the AI pandemic. You know what I'm saying? And you better figure out the new ways to make money because your old ways are disappearing. So hmm. now we got education. I'm about to go but be an AI integrator myself. I'm AI integrator and SaaS builder. Yeah. I think we, we really focus on building out this software and selling the software. Yeah. But so here's the thing. Yeah, like go high level? Huh? Like, you know, people sell yeah. go, stuff like yeah. that. Too. Yeah. yeah. But no, actually, it's better than that. Got it's it. better than that. Got it. So we educate people, but even some people are not good at learning. Yeah. Right? They have learning disabilities. So what do we do past education? We give them instructions. We'll give you step by step. Hey, follow this. Do one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to walk your hand through it. Then that wasn't enough for people because people are lazy. Yeah. They figured out they didn't really have a passion for it. So now we're in the last phase of. What I've been teaching this whole time, which is now automation, mm. we'll set it up for you. Wow. Right? So in our course, we're going to do everything. We're going to motivate, inspire, educate, instruct, right? And we're going to automate so you can execute. So I feel like people are in this race right now to make sure that you're really developing your, your human skills and your intelligence and your strengths. We don't, the world is not going to need people that's uh, just good at what they do. They're going to need people that's great at their gifts. Yeah. Right. Because those are the people that's going to be able to execute. I don't want people that's doing it passively that, oh, I don't find purpose in this. People yep. that don't have work ethic. Yep. That's going to have to die out. Right. If you want to be replaced by robots and AI, do it because these robots are going to come. And I think it was uh, a conundrum. She said they're going to be doing. Oh, let me get the direct quote. I love this today. She's sharp, too. I love this today. What she said. It made so much sense. She ate this post because she was talking about how she went to the, um, uh, there was a nurse or somebody at the hospital talking about how they went to the hospital visit and there was virtual nurses, essentially, right? So instead of seeing a real person because they understaffed, there was a virtual nurse, I guess, in the waiting room or whatever that came to see them. And the lady was like, what the hell is going on? Mm -hmm. So she had explained that AI, robotic, and virtual products and services will become basic, but human-involved products and services will become premium. Right. So you're going to have to deal with a human or a robot for the most part. Now, human services is going to be for the rich. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, if you want Neo to actually consult you or do you yeah. want Neo's, you know, AI to consult you? Right. Now, Neo's AI is built on everything that Neo knows. So you can ask it direct questions. Right. It's going to have maybe a deep fake interface where it looks just like you. It talks like you. But if you want Neo and his time. That's going to cost you a premium service. You don't get that. So the last but not least, people should be going out there, like my brother uh, Dominique did. He built a business in a little under three to six months where he had a goal to just use prompting and follow the instructions of prompting saying, how can I get to 100,000 followers yep. in three months following only the instructions from ChatGPT? He did that and became one of the thought leaders, right, uh, in AI space right now. Wow. To where he got not only, where is he at right now? Mr. Grateful is what they call him. And you know, Mr. Grateful was working for me at first. He was making all my thumbnails. Wow. So he was doing all the graphic design. Crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but this is the ascension. He's now at 300,000 followers, mm. right? At the time he was working for me at like five to 10,000, wow. right? No engagement probably whatsoever. But he followed it to a T, transparent with the journey, executed, got up to 300,000 and way under a year. You know what I'm saying? And he had a goal. The next goal after he got the followers is how do I make $100,000, right, using only ChatGPT prompts. He made the $100,000. He got deals with all of these companies to be a speaker, right, and help them build out their products and partnerships. Now he has a full course that he's running as well. So it's like the opportunities are there.
crazy. Right? Learn how to utilize these tools, not for what you hear people say, but learn how to think about them so you can do them in your own way. Woo! Y'all, AISupremacyChallenge.com. You're going to learn everything there is to know about. I didn't know how deep this went. This, go, oh, this it's goes. It's a lot more, bro. It's, oh, it's, it goes crazy. He probably could go a couple more hours. But listen, come spend a whole week with keys and I'm sure special guests showing you everything you need to know about AI. Like, I'm just excited about the AI integrator. Listen, think about this concept. I need somebody in my business to come do all things AI where they obsess about it. That's my business, right? And that's where we got a business that does okay. I mean, it does pretty well. But imagine how many other people need this right now, and you are the person that's going to fulfill that need after you spend this time with Keith. So go to AISupremacy.com right now, and um, Ooh, can't wait somebody to see getting you there. a job. Yeah, one thousand <laughs> keys. Let them know how they can tap in with you, brother. Man, yeah. y'all come tap in. Go to 19keys.com if you want to know anything that we got going on. Make sure you join the AI Supremacy Challenge ASAP. This is an incredible opportunity for us to be able to control the future wow. and have the skills and the money of the future at the same time. You can find me on all platforms, the real 19keys, uh, on all platforms. Make sure it's a verified source. Let's go. We'll see you on the next show. Let's get it.